a new kind of DNS attack has been discovered. This story and more on ThreatWire. A new kind of vulnerability was found in GitHub Enterprise Server that was assigned a CVSS score of 10. To be clear, this vulnerability, CVE 2024-4985, does not affect the average user, meaning those who use GitHub Cloud. This only affects teams that roll their own GitHub instances. On instances that use SAML single sign-on authentication with the optional encrypted assertions feature, an attacker could forge a SAML response to provision and or gain access to a user with administrator privileges. They specifically note that instances not using SAML SSO or SAML SSO without encrypted assertions are not effective. The bug was actually discovered via the GitHub bug bounty program. Emergency fixes were rolled out starting with GitHub Enterprise Server versions 3.9.15. However, the issue is fully resolved in versions 3.13.0. If you're a GitHub Enterprise practitioner, please be sure to update your GitHub instances ASAP. Turn it up to GPS. Both Apple, Google, and other companies use Wi-Fi-based positioning systems, known as WPS for short. Apple and Google both collect BSSIDs, or Basic Service Set Identifiers, which come from a Wi-Fi access point's MAC address. They both catalog this information and can be used later to approximately triangulate a device's location. In new research from Eric Rye and Dave Levin from the University of Maryland, they discovered that via Apple's generous APIs regarding WPS, they were able to triangulate the location of millions of Wi-Fi access points, including those in war zones. Apple's WPS API takes in BSSIDs and returns the potential geolocation or the geolocation of up to 400 nearby BSSIDs that can then be used to run calculations locally. Using a list of BSSID ranges maintained by the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, or IEEE for short, Rye was able to generate a database of over 488 million BSSIDs and their geolocation from around the globe, allowing the tracking of groups over time. You can extrapolate what this means and how this data can be used. Users of Starlink and GL.INET are pinpointed to be most at risk for this geolocation issue. While the research paper also talks about Google's potential faults in their WPS system, Google requires the use of an API key used for billing, while Apple does not. The researchers estimate that doing a project like this on Google's WPS would cost millions of dollars to execute. On the other hand, Apple's WPS API is free and does not require an API key, any authentication, or to specifically be called from an Apple device. The researchers specifically call out that their research was done from a Linux system using Golang. It really is the year of the Linux desktop. The researchers have reached out to relevant companies and disclosed their findings. Apple has indicated that they are on track to make several changes to their WPS in order to better protect user privacy. At the time of writing, they have given access point operators the ability to opt out of inclusion in Apple's WPS by appending the string underscore no map to a Wi-Fi's network's SSID. This change brings it in line with Google's WPS and Wiggle, which have also excluded SSIDs with underscore no map and underscore no map and underscore opt out since at least 2016. Starlink has already started rolling out firmware updates to randomize MAC addresses, and GL.INAT has plans to do the same. A recent study has uncovered a powerful new denial of service attack method named DNS bomb. Researchers from Tsinghua University revealed that this attack exploits fundamental DNS mechanisms, such as timeout, query aggregation, and response fast returning to generate high volume pulsing traffic bursts capable of overwhelming target systems. DNS bomb works by accumulating DNS queries over an extended period, amplifying these queries into large size responses, and then concentrating all responses into a short high volume burst. This method leverages the inherent timeout mechanisms of DNS, which allows queries to be accumulated for up to 10 seconds, significantly longer than traditional path latency exploitation. The response fast returning mechanism ensures that all responses are returned simultaneously, creating a powerful traffic pulse. 
The researchers demonstrated the effectiveness of DNS Bomb through extensive testing on 10 mainstream DNS software, 46 public DNS services, and around 1.8 million open DNS resolvers. The results were alarming. All tested resolvers were vulnerable to this attack, with some generating a peak pulse magnitude of up to 8.7 gigabits per second and a bandwidth amplification factor exceeding 20,000 times. We demonstrate that all DNS resolvers could be exploited to conduct more practical and powerful DNS bomb attacks than previous pulsing DOS attacks. Small scale experiments show the peak pulse magnitude can approach 8.7 gigabits per second and the bandwidth amplification factor could exceed 20,000 times. Our controlled attacks cause complete packet loss or service degradation on both stateless and stateful connections. The team also highlighted that traditional detection methods might fail against DNS bomb due to its low average traffic rate during accumulation and high burst rate during execution. To mitigate this threat, researchers proposed several solutions, including reducing the timeout value and extending the response returning time. These findings have been responsibly disclosed to affected vendors, with many confirming patches are underway. Last week's AI story was actually a trick. None of the stories were written by AI, and in the words of my Twitch chat, you got pwned. But there is an AI story this week, and as a reminder, the AI stories are real news stories, but the actual script is written by AI. As this is the last week of May, it is the last week of AI story writing, and I'm super curious to know, what did you all think of it? Can you please let me know in the comments down below because I would love to hear the feedback. And as a reminder, I did drop a new YouTube video over on my personal channel if you wanna go check it out. I do wanna start making content over there on a regular basis, so if you have any funny ideas about tech or security you would love to see me do, you should let me know in the comments of my most recent video. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of May 27th, 2024. If you enjoyed this ad-free reporting, you could head over to patreon.com slash threatwire and support us over there. If you wanna find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending with Allie. So good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.